Hey, hey, Terry Bean here with another fun and exciting episode of Business Growth Time. We're doing something totally different today. We're bringing on two guests simultaneously. Ooh. We've done it once before, but we're doubling down on it today. We're going to introduce them in just a minute, and we're going to talk about why and the buy with them. So a little precursor. But with me, as always, you know her, you love her, you're a huge fan, and you can't wait to see her again, Janet E. Johnson, where today... The E stands for perfection. Oh boy. That's the E it's word. E totally. perfection. It's e, she's electronically perfect. We had a little pre show discussion and we were talking about a test that she came across and scored as a perfection. <gasps> hey, only 1% of the population. <laughs> By the way, I just created one of those quizzes myself. It's all fake. It's all <laughs> fake. <laughs> Thing. So, oh, you know. but anyway, so no, that is good. So, e perfection. That's, that's it. Sure. All right. Well, let me let me introduce our guest and let's get right into it. I've known Jeff Bajoric for about three years when he showed up at a fuel event here in Detroit. Uh, he was one of the great people that actually paid for that event. <laughs> Jeff Bajoric. It was, we'll talk about that day. That's a really funny story, and you're a heck of a good sport. Jeff is involved in a podcast with his pal, Christy Walter. Both of them are certified Gittimer trainers with the man, the legend himself, Jeffrey Gittimer. You may know of him from the Little Red Book of Selling. If you don't know of him from that book or his almost dozen other books, you should know about him because the guy has some really cool ideas about interacting with the customer. I'm going to let them fill you in on it. Jeff Bajorek, Christy Walter, say hi to Ernie. Hi, Ernie. Hi, Ernie. Who's Ernie? <laughs> who's Ernie? <laughs> Janet, I, who's Ernie? We have an E theme, so we named yeah. our audience Ernie. Oh, oh Ernie. Ernie. Got it. What's up, Ernie? <laughs> I love it. it. All I right. love it. Okay, so yeah, I mean, I, I haven't been on this podcast before and heard uh, several of the episodes. I know that the E at the beginning means something different every time, <laughs> and that's awesome, but I have missed, uh, embarrassingly, I've missed the episodes. There's probably a hundred of them. We don't always now. talk about Ernie. Where, but, oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Now, all right. It, You're showing me up here. A few, few, few ago. I, I don't know. <laughs> okay, I get it. This is posturing on the podcast is what it is. Let's just make sure we our guests know who they are and where they belong. All right, cool. Excellent. Cool. Excellent. I'd like to, you know what, honestly, we spent more time talking with you all about this show and what we might do than we do with anybody. <laughs> for, for Janet's every ounce of her perfectionism, I have whatever is the exact opposite of E perfectionism. I'm like Z perfectionism. I would score like zero. <laughs> That's why you make such a great pair. It could be. It could be. And like Paul Abdul said it best, right? It's opposite of the truth. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> was it her or the cartoon wolf? I don't remember. <laughs> it was, I think they were both going at it. Um, Go to YouTube, no. kids. You'll find out what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, isn't she on a TV show now, right? Everybody watches. Wasn't she on one of those things, X Factor or... American Idol, one. I think. American Idol. Thank yeah. you. I was going to say, don't act like I'm the only one that knows no, this. No, no. <laughs> Paula Abdul was. Yes, yes. Oh, okay. So. Was. Okay. Past tense. All right. So let's, let's talk about content that actually is relevant to what we're doing. You have a podcast called The Why in the Buy. Let's start there. Let's talk about what you talk about, what you share with your audience, and why they keep listening. Christy, why don't you take this one? You, oh, you're, wow. You, I, I'm going to defer to you. <laughs> so it's interesting. Our, when Jeff and I first met, and we met at a, a Gittimer event in Charlotte uh, a couple of years ago, we really hit it off and started having some fabulous conversations about our business. And our business is coaching and training salespeople. And we thought at one point, it was like, wow, we really have some gems in these conversations. We should record this. And then Jeff goes, well, why don't we do a podcast? I'm like, oh, yeah. And then we brainstormed some ideas and the why and the by was, was born. And the rest, as they say, is history. Okay. But we focus on sales and leadership uh, content. Uh, sometimes it's just the two of us. And believe it or not, actually, some of our, our largest downloads have been episodes that are just the two of us talking about a particular topic. And we have had probably 25 guests uh, this year, we've got uh, 39 episodes in the can, and we're pretty much booked up with guests or 
uh, episodes to record uh, through the end of the year. So it's gonna, it's been an incredible journey, but we launched it in January and have had uh, some good success with it. And we just wanted a way for people to get a sense of who we were. If you didn't know us, how do you get to know us? And how do we expand that network? Well, and it's funny too, and what Christy didn't mention there um, is that it was probably six months between when we decided that we should do it <laughs> and when we actually started recording. And then it was another two months since we recorded before we actually produced those and, and published those first four episodes. It was something that we were sure. going to start in the fourth quarter of 2016. And finally it was like, all right, we're ready to go January 5th or whatever <laughs> it was. And because, you know, there's that, can we swear on this podcast? Terry does all the time. Is this, do I have, we, we didn't cover that and appreciate it's, but it. Was, it's it was like that. being in my house, Jeff. Well, the right. perfectionism, oh. oh, you know, I kind of. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, it's one of those holy shit moments. Like, oh, well, I guess we have a podcast now. Well, we should probably <laughs> learn what it means to put together a podcast. And um, I may not be an e-perfectionist, but I'm pretty close. And, <laughs> and so from the standpoint of if I'm going to represent myself, I'm going to do it in a way that I'm proud of. So yeah. then it was, all right, now I need to learn how to do this. I don't want to just take this right away and say, here you go, uh, whatever, you know, a, a virtual assistant or a podcast production service or, or whatever. I wanted to be able to play with it. I wanted to know what it was that went into the production and the final product so that I knew it represented both Christy and myself. And, you know, we put a lot of our own personality into it. Um, there's a local band that we call our house band and they're local to Southeastern Michigan. They're called Haskins. Um, one guy that one of the guitar players is my cousin. The other guy is a guy that that Ken and I went to graduated high school with. Um, I was in a band with those guys when we were in college and they've gone on and become way better musicians than we ever were when we were kids. And so it's kind of cool that we've got this local kind of flavor to it and we can bring people on and we, we kind of have our own um, perspectives and our own personalities that are shown through it. And I think mm -hmm. part of the journey was figuring out how to do that ourselves so that we could do it that way so that we didn't just sound like everybody else. Cause that's the thing. And, and, and I know you guys have a team of people that help you to produce this because this is only a small part of what you do being that you're both a lot more established than Christy and I are, but we wanted to take that approach. And uh, interestingly enough, now it's like, oh, okay, we got this figured out. Can someone do this for us? Yeah. Two and a half years that <laughs> we've been doing it. I did mine at the beginning too. And I actually had a different partner at the beginning. So mm. Um, yes. Kimmy, the social media puppet. Is Kimmy yes. here? Oh, Kimmy. Shh, we're trying to get rid of her. Stop it. <laughs> Where is she, Kimmy? She lives on the internet today still if you go to YouTube. But, <laughs> but uh, yeah, we had a, you know, Lisa Celine, who actually had worked with Jeff Freakinimer quite a bit, uh, had been my partner, but then she went on to do different things. Terry called me, and I did the same thing you did, just FYI. Okay. Learned everything myself, did everything myself, and then I went, stop wasting your time yeah. on this stuff. <laughs> Don't do it anymore yourself. And so now, literally, we record and we will, I, I just have to hand the recording off and then I hand the, I only have to give the title to my graphic designer and he just creates this awesome graphic and all that stuff. So, I mean, really we good. literally just have to focus on getting the inter people to interview and the recording and then push it out on social media once it's live. So. Sure. But I mean, that's kind of, Terry, what you and I talked about, I mean, just a couple of weeks ago or last week, I think, what did we want to talk about today? And one of the things you brought up was, you know, intentionally growing your business or, or taking the time to grow your business the way you want to do it. And I think taking ownership of the final product is only one of the ways that you can do that. And once you get your feet underneath, you know, like, okay, we've got our rhythm. Yep. We've got this, we've got, I don't want to call it a formula, but we've got a certain way that we do things that we can instruct or teach or delegate then. Yeah. Okay, cool. Then, then that's something that is replicable outside of your own 24 hours every day because you know, it's, when I, you know, the way we kind of break things up is I handle the post-production and the mixing and then Christy handles the actual distribution of the podcast. And so far that works out pretty well for me, but mm -hmm. you know, it, it went for, uh, you know, I was spending two and a half hours per episode after we recorded to make sure that everything was good and finally got through that learning curve, learned to let go of some of the perfectionism as it came to, you know, ums and stutters and buts and yes, ifs and ands, that's you important. know, yeah. but what's also gotten better is when, when, 
uh, Christy and I realized that we're, we just kind of take the approach of we're recording live. Well, all of a sudden things flow a little more differently too. And um, it's definitely more authentic. And I've seen a lot more podcasts too, where I'm like, wow, that, that's a big show. And they don't do half the editing I do. All right, maybe this is acceptable. It's, you know, it's standards and practices. And um, now it's a much more manageable time for me. I enjoy it. It gives me an opportunity to listen to our guests, especially, and some of the things that are, you know, that come out of both Christie's and my mouth and in terms of the things that we say, because, you know, I mean, how many times are you working with a client? You say something, you're like, oh, I should probably write that down. Well, we've got it all recorded. <laughs> so sometimes, <laughs> yeah, sometimes right. going back and giving it a listen, even if it's at, you know, true. almost double speed, you know, you find that themes keep coming up. And, and when Christy and I work with clients, we find these themes. And then if you can hear it, if you can be present enough to hear it and, and kind of hear yourself speak, that theme kind of gets developed into something else that you can really make an impact to your customers and your clients with. And that's been a real value to me. So even, um, you know, part of me wants to give up the post-production because it's just something I won't have to do. On the other hand, that is very much a thinking process for me in terms of how I'm going to relate to my clients. And I don't know that I would go back and listen to it again. Right. I mean, I'm a subscriber to my own podcast, but it's like, Oh yeah, I remember that one. That was good. Skip. I remember that one. That was good. Skip. You know, like, so, you know, yeah, I, mean, I get I smarter my own every time. Either. Yeah. I how get many? smarter every time I listen to one of the podcasts. I'm like, yeah, damn i am good <laughs> right so it's a great you do confidence learn a lot about yourself yeah, right. when you, you listen do. to yourself and watch you know both you know both sides absolutely yeah. well and i think there are a couple of things that when you know kind of tie this back to taking time to grow your business i work with a lot of small business owners a lot of solopreneurs and one of the first conversations we have is let's talk about what you need to do to survive so what do you need to do to keep the lights on, keep the kids in school, keep them fed so that you're not freaking out at every moment about the fact that there isn't enough money coming in. Basic so, necessities, right? Yeah, yeah exactly. Very basic block. stuff. And it may mean that, hey, you're going to do some things that are not part of your long-term plan. That's okay. I don't want you to freak out about that if what it's doing is providing those basic necessities. And I kind of liken what we did with the podcast to that. One, we weren't making any money at it. And it was just, it was a marketing element to our businesses that were still in the fledgling state at the time. And it was a way for people to get to know us. So we needed to be intimately involved with that. And I think now that we have, you know, gosh, I mean, we've got 40 plus hours of recording under our belt. Now it's an opportunity where we actually understand what goes into post-production. We understand what goes into distribution and we can associate the appropriate level of value to that. If we had started out, I think, with someone else doing all of that for us, we, we, wouldn't, we wouldn't know what was the right amount of money to spend on it or not. And I think the other side of that is picking up sponsors and starting to work on finding ways for other people to fund the production of the podcast is probably the next stage that we'll go to. So that we're not necessarily having to fund that out of our businesses as much as we are providing that as an opportunity for sponsors to, uh, to uh, support the, um, the ongoing podcast. Well, and to reach our audience. Yeah. I mean, that's, that, that's the thing. I mean, our audience grows and it's kind of fun. I mean, and, but it, you know, with, to your point, Christy, about perspective and, and Janet and Terry, I don't, I don't know how you guys have measured this, but you know, in terms of not only what does stuff cost and why does it cost that? I don't know. That just, that's more money than I have right now. So I guess I'll just do it myself because this is important. And then also, I mean, what's good in terms of downloads and reach and listeners and, and things. I mean, so many times, whether it, and we can talk in terms of a podcast because the four of us here regular, re, regularly record them. But I mean, for anybody listening, do you have any metrics against which you can measure your own success? And as a small business owner, they could be anything. It and that is just anything. overwhelming. Let me answer that question by talking about, I went to um, Social Media Marketing World in San Diego last year, and I decided to sit on in on with John Loomer, or no, sorry, John Lee Dumas. Sorry, you might know that name. Yep. 
Yep. Yep. Entrepreneur on Fire. And they had a panel discussion about how to become a guest on more podcasts. And one of the things they said is, you ne- A, you never ask how many downloads they have. B, it doesn't matter how many downloads they have. And the reason for that is because that audience, as long as that's your potential audience and they have 100 raving fans, that's all that matters. Mm-hmm. It, you know, it's, it's like stick, standing in front of a room. If you could stand in front of a room and be speaking in front of 100 people, now you're getting in the ears of 100 people. Yeah. So it, you know, whether it's 20, whether it's a hundred, whether it's a thousand, whether it's a million, it does not matter as long as that's your core audience. Yeah. Yeah. I love so, John Lee Dumas. He does, he does an amazing job. He's a very smart guy. Yeah. Well, and he's got millions, but yeah, of right. fans and dollars. <laughs> <laughs> he puts it out there. So we all know, but <laughs> millions of the important things. Fans yes. Things. Right. Exactly. <laughs> that's right. Yeah, exactly. So that's, yes. that's kind of my answer to that. Cause it kind of, you know, we don't have a gazillion downloads and we've been doing this a long time, but the bottom line is we know that people are consistently listening and it's our yep. core audience. And mm-hmm. that's, all that really matters to us, you know. Mm-hmm. It just gets. I think for Jeff and I both, it we get we're very jazzed when someone sends us a note. Or I, I've had I've had people in my network that I haven't connected with in fifteen years that send me these notes out of the blue and say, "God, just listen to that episode on servant leadership, and you hit it. You hit the nail on the head. That was amazing. Thank you so much for putting this out there. We love it." just little things like that. And it's like, okay, so we are getting through and maybe you're not, you're not looking to hire us today, but the next time I guarantee you the next time that you're looking for someone to come in for coaching, for strategy work or for training, you're going to think about what we bring to the table. And you're already going to feel connected to us in a way that I never could have gotten by sending you emails, by connecting with you on LinkedIn, right. or, or even yeah. necessarily having phone conversations with you. This is different. You don't get into this kind of depth every day with people. So it's, a, it's, a, it's an opportunity for them to take a journey with us. And I love it. I, you know what? I'd be okay if I was a podcaster for the rest of my career. <laughs> You know, realistically, part of the reason that I'm not a fan of post editing is what Jeff used the word authenticity earlier. I am like this. This is who I am. If I'm going to have to be somebody not like this to appease you, we're not going to get along very well. We're not going to enjoy the business relationship. So I use my personality and attitude out front and open is almost a prickly pear, right? I don't know if I want to deal with that guy. Mm -hmm. But if you're not sure you don't want to deal with this guy, I can guarantee you, you definitely (laughs) don't want to because this is it, man. This is who I am. And I'm, I mean, I'm a little more reserved on our show most of the time than I am in real life. Mostly, (laughs) I mostly, I only, like I have a Janet must squirm once per show rule. (laughs) (laughs) I don't want to, you know, sometimes I want to see different colors and shades. Do what I can get away with. But for the most part, it's, it's important to be who you are, right? And allow your audience and your tribe to come to you. So I think editing messes that up. Yeah, and isn't that a, actually a challenge, I think, for a lot of salespeople in general to, mm. to really embrace who you are? And I would say that if anything, this has been a, a real eye-opening experience for me from that perspective of it's okay. I don't have to check every box and, and check the, the statement that I'm making and go back and rewrite it in my head. I, it's okay the way it comes out. And we actually just had a conversation right before this about how our prep has changed mm-hmm. over time. Mm-hmm. And, you know, the fact that we are, you know, we started out very structured with, uh, with work, uh, production worksheets and uh, post-production materials. Sorry. And <laughs> I know dying. exactly. <laughs> You don't shy. even know what You're those shy. things are. <laughs> <laughs> like, what are you talking about? That's okay. We, we've, 
we've abandoned that process. We do get a bio and a headshot, which I there need you for go. me too. But <laughs> well, <laughs> so I'm evidently we get this. those eventually. <laughs> yes, you'll get them eventually. But and th- you know, that's the thing, though, is I don't know if any of your listeners have noticed, but we know how to talk. And so yeah. one of the yeah. things that we were most concerned with was being succinct. And I mean, listen, we can sit down and uh, have a cup of coffee or whatever. and We can talk for a couple hours. I, I enjoy these kinds of interactions. They're great. But as a listener, oh, man, you hear these podcasts. I'm like, are they going to say anything or am I just overhearing a conversation? Sometimes that's welcome. Sometimes it's like get to the point or we will lose you. And I think we were maybe a little more concerned about that at first than we needed to be. And so what we found was, again, you know, much like doing our own post-production and everything else, we got our training wheels and those training wheels have been taken off. And now we just know, and it's funny too, is we've done, uh, we've, we've, you know, starting with the worksheets and started with, all right, we want to make sure we ask these three questions. We want to make sure we cover these three topics. Now it's kind of like three minutes before we start. Like, okay, what are we going to talk about? Oh, we got a guest on. They've got a book. Okay, that's cool. But you find is that the, the best questions that you can ask come from when you're just genuinely interested in what that other person mm-hmm. is saying. And some of it's just about being present and being connected to the moment you're in rather than being tied to this worksheet because you, well, what if the conversation doesn't go that way? And that's, I get on salespeople all the time. I'm like, okay, you have your script, you have your talking points. Yeah. Do you, have you made a connection at all? Like, well, is it even worth doing any business with you? Or are you too focused on what you've got to do to listen to what the other person's saying? And I mean, what, I don't need your script. You need to know what you want to talk about and you need to know when it's applicable to talk about that as well. And so Christine and I have found that. And you know, what's interesting too is doing these, uh, doing these podcasts over video, we can kind of see each other, you know, we can, and, and I don't, I, I tend to focus on my camera when I talk more than focusing on the screen in front of me as it is. Um, but when you, I, I know when it's her turn to talk, and I know when she's got something that she's going to want to say and you just, you find this flow. And I think there aren't, there, there isn't enough credence given by enough people, salespeople or otherwise to just kind of being, allowing yourself to be in the moment, allowing yourself to really be present and understand the situation that you're in. And um, it, it takes some work. It takes a concerted effort to allow yourself to do that. But once you're there, I mean, that's what the best people do. This is why people complain about not being able to remember names. Right? Yeah. It's not, it's, this isn't a memory issue that no. you can't remember someone's name. It's an attention issue mm-hmm. you're focused on what you're going to say to sound intelligent or reasonable or smart or likable or whatever else. You're not focused on the other person. Mm-hmm. Right? So it's the, it's the same thing. So if you're going into a sales call with your script, you know, you're totally worried about the things that you have to get out, which isn't really solving their problem most of the time, right? No. Yeah. Listen to them first. And it's a rookie mistake too, right? So, you know, and <laughs> there's a lot is. of, there's, there's a, a lot of old dogs that keep rocks. making those mistakes. <laughs> this, is <true>. so. <laughs> this is true. But, you know, as, especially I think in our circumstance, it just gave us a lot of confidence about what we were doing in an environment that was new to us. And I think that's where you see, when I call it a rookie mistake, that's where you see, especially a lot of new salespeople who are depending too much on that script to, uh, to move the conversation forward. And it, it, I, I think it, it, it took a few episodes, I think. Mm-hmm. It certainly for me, it probably took me a little bit longer than it did for Jeff, for me to get to a point where I was like, okay, nope, we're going to just kind of move with this. And there's topic and framework. I mean, there's certainly, you want to make sure that whatever you are doing actually does come back to a point that the audience can take away. And I realized that that was my driver right? Mm-hmm. Was just, okay, so what is it? Why is someone going to listen to this? Because if you're going to spend 30 to 45 minutes of your time with me, I want to make sure that you're going to get something out of it. And I think we've learned just naturally, and, and, and we work very well together. We did learn just naturally to, to wrap that up effectively. Mm-hmm. And it doesn't require a script to do it. 
So, so here's, here, here's a fun little tip. If you're going to spend 30 minutes with us, if you just turn your podcast player to 1, 1.5x speed, it actually shortens that 30 minutes to 22 minutes. So you can save eight minutes that way. The flip of that is if you take us to half speed, we sound like we are shit hammered. So <laughs> it's kind of fun if you want to do that. If you just want to hear what Christy sounds I'm like after like nine martinis. It's so it's hard. It's like, uh, it's uh, great. Yeah, Janet, I'm with you. I can't do that. He talks about that all the time. He's like, yeah, I listen to it at like 2x and I'm going, oh, I can't do dude, two. it's like the oh, like, Can't yeah. do two. Can't do two, but 1.5 is really good. And especially when it comes to audiobooks and things, because we're taught to yeah. enunciate and we're taught to slow down yes. so people mm -hmm. can hear us and we can be very deliberate. Mm -hmm. Then you put it up to 1.5 and it's like, oh, it sounds like I'm talking to Normal. you. Normal. Mm -hmm. And yeah. to, to the point now where when I listen to it just at regular speed, it sounds slow. It's, um, but, like, oh I mean, God, it's too bad these people are challenged. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, it's saving 25% of your time. Four to five times more information, right, than we speak. We, mm -hmm. we, can, we can get a 750 to 1,000 words in from a processing perspective, but we're speaking 150 to 200. Mm -hmm. And so absolutely, it makes total sense. I don't listen to enough podcasts, and I certainly, to our earlier conversation, never listen to ours. Janet, do you ever listen to our podcast? Mm, sometimes little bits and pieces yeah little bits Good. and pieces but not a whole ton e, e perfection needs to do a little bit of quality control check She's, every once in a while <laughs> if she listened to this she'd probably cancel the whole thing she'd be like what are we doing? why she'd have a new partner a new show <laughs> oh, no oh. jerry keeps me on my toes so it's, it's entertaining come on <laughs> i actually i mean i think about doing a podcast if i did one by myself i did a facebook live right before coming on here mm -hmm. and it's so different i mean so it's just two different things because you know you're talking straight to an audience you know, I was getting to the point. I was a lot more serious. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the podcasting is a little more fun and laid back and, you know, go with the flow of things. I, I just was on a summit, too, where we recorded via Zoom. And it was very structured questions. And she, you know, when she asked those questions, it was very structured. And it just wasn't flowing like a podcast does. And I think that's where it takes practice. You know, and, and time at doing it too. But I think it's, uh, you know, podcasts should be a little more laid back. But I think they should always have a point and get to that point. I know one friend of, my, friend of mine that does a podcast, no names, but they talk BS crap, you know, stuff about their life for about a half hour, you know, and I'm like, okay, when are we getting to the actual topic at hand and there's can mm -hmm. be like an hour 15 minutes nobody wants to you know it's great to get to know the people a little bit but then get to the point and get to the topic yeah and and what's really interesting too and, and terry might remember this from a couple of years ago when i started recording videos for my youtube channel as a means of getting more content out there i could have a, a conversation over zoom or over blab or google hangouts whatever it was and great that's that's easy it, it flows we're just talking put me in front of a camera by myself and it was like um okay well what is this supposed to look like you you get caught you really get in your own way you and do. i remember probably three or four months into it my wife is looking at some of these videos and she's like jeff i see that that's you um and i know that you wrote that um and i love you i love <laughs> you, you right um, but i wouldn't date fantastic that's what she said. She's like, look, I'm happily married to you, but I would not date the guy that I see on the camera. You got to do something to lighten up. And Terry, I remember talking to you about it and you're like, yeah, there's no energy coming back from that camera. You're looking at a camera. You've got nothing to play off of. There's nothing coming back. And, you know, so uh, it took some time though. It took some practice. And, and Christy's going on vacation here in a couple of weeks and I'm going to have to take on an episode myself. And she's like, uh, you're going to get a guest. I'm like, hell yeah, I'm going to get a guest. <laughs> Nobody wants to just sit and listen to me. <laughs> Honey, the show's fun. over. We're done. I, I did the episode myself. Yeah. I just, I could watch the drop rate. It was. Yeah. yeah I'm, <laughs> no. if, for lack of anybody, I might get my kids to be the guest. That'd be, there you go. be better yeah. than uh, <laughs> me be, just by myself. That might be awesome. <laughs> I, uh, That's funny. You got so much good information, though. I can't imagine that that would be true, Jeff. Well, thank you for saying that. Yeah, but, it's uh, very, it's, very it's all out there. But, it's uh, all. 
Um, except what I'm coming up with on a, just a streaming basis. My, my, everything that I've put out there is out there and is, fun, is able to be found, but um, there's always something going on in this crazy brain of mine. But um, so I want to, I'm going to, I'm, if I'm allowed to do this, I'm going to flip this around on you guys. Christy doesn't even know that we're going to do this because I just came up with it off the top of my head. But on our podcast, every guest comes on and we ask them what their why is. And Terry's been a guest on our podcast, so I'm going to make Terry go first before Janet goes so she can think on this for herself. But um, what is your why? My why primarily focuses around amusement at this point, right? So I am, if you look at the, cut all the layers off, at my core is fun or bliss. And so chasing that, things that amuse and entertain me and that, can be kind of spread out to entertain and amuse others. I want us to have fun, man. I think people take this life way too seriously. And I think if we got back to taking care of that need, that need that allows us to to feel really, really good about ourselves and the people that are around us, um, I think we'd live in a much, much better society. So mine is stripping it all the way to straight up amusement. How is about you, this a Jan? why for the podcast, or is it a why for? Your well, I might have misunderstood the question. Why do you do? That's what, what I'm wondering. Why do you do it? Why do you do what you do, Janet? I mean, you're. Why you're do I in, do what I do? Well, I. Yeah. I mean, I will 100 percent admit I am money motivated. I mean, that's just me. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. <laughs> but you know, it's just I, I keep telling my kids, I'm like, life is expensive, especially yes. when you own a boat. <laughs> but anyway. Um, <laughs> Sure. Uh, but but beyond that, it's just being able to be comfortable and provide what I need to for my family. So it does boil down to money, but it, it also just, you know, being very comfortable with what I'm doing. Um, I love what I do and I, I have fun with it. I have uh, flexibility with it. I can work if I want to. I don't have to work if I want to. I have a friend that just got pneumonia and got sick and she waitresses and she just, she can't even now pay, you know, and I'd be like, well, I'd be in my bed working on my computer, you know? Right. So that's kind of my why of what I do is just, uh, you know, obviously to make the money, obviously I'm a teacher background, so I love helping people too. And so that's why I have an online course and I want to help. I, I tend to, because of my background with this, I tend to have bigger clients and I need that to pay, you know, that's what pays the bills. But I always want to help the smaller ones too, so that's why I built the online course. So that's I have a lot I, of wise. That's that's what I'm getting at too. And I wasn't. I mean, I, like I said, I surprised you with this because no, it just fine. looked like a cool opportunity. But the, um, you know, we all have bills to pay and and needs to fulfill and and things like that. But and you could waitress if you wanted to, right? I mean, you could do a lot of things if you wanted to, but you do what you do for a very specific purpose and you're very, very good at it. And I don't think anybody gets really good at something as good as you guys are without having a sense of purpose behind why that is what they chose to do. So I'm, I'm glad that I wasn't so vague with the question that you got to, you have a passion for teaching and you have a passion for helping other people and you know you can help the bigger corporations and companies because you've got such a skill set, but at the same time, you really love helping the people on a smaller scale because of how personal you can get and the online course helps to fulfill that. So, yep. Um, and that's what the podcast cool. is for too. Kind of the yeah. smaller, it could be for any, but yeah, exactly. Exactly. So let me ask you guys, we have to ask you our, our question. And uh, then I have, I have two questions actually. One is what's your favorite eighties tune? Because that's what we were supposed to ask all our guests. <laughs> Speaking of my amusement favorite, and entertainment, my favorite '80s tune. So, all right, are you are you are you um, are you being specific be to created. the to the release date of the song or the, the genre known as '80s music? Yes. That's the, yeah. okay. Yeah, because yeah. I don't really. Oh, are you too young? <laughs> You're what about are you thinking? Age, like yeah. a 1992 Duran Duran release? What? What do you? What, what are you? <laughs> Asking that question. No, Hungry what I mean like is, wolf, I baby. Like, there you go. Oh, see, there you go. See, now, so I like, I like a lot of music, and I like a lot of music that may have been released in the '80s. However, I'm not a big fan of the bubblegum pop '80s music, and that's why I wanted to make sure that I um, uh, differentiated there. Ooh, '80s. 
Christy, was, was that old. yours? It was one of them. Uh, I think it's got to be more Prince. Maybe, oh. you know, yeah, maybe. Oh, you're speaking Terry's language now. That's yeah. our town. That's my yeah. town. Yeah. yeah. I was and with Terry. In Minneapolis. Yeah. Oh, you were sitting I next was to me. sitting yeah. next to Terry the day the purple, uh, the oh. purple left, left the building. Um, oh, right. Okay. Oh, wow. Yeah. So, uncomfortably close, actually. Right. Um, <laughs> did, you, did you hug it out? <laughs> well, it was weird. There was a standing ovation in a room of 300 people for a young lady who just got done speaking. Mm -hmm. And I just sat there. I like everybody got up and applauded. I was like, I wasn't moving. I was, it was in a whole different world. I feel bad for Veronica. Not that she notices her Terry. Yeah, she we were so far in the balcony, Terry. I'm sure she wasn't even sure that we were there. No lunch room, dude. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's right. It was in the lunch room. Yes, you're right. You're right. I remember now. Yeah. I remember where we were sitting for most of that program. All right, my favorite song that came on the eighties. I don't have one. That's a terrible answer. <laughs> don't have one. All right, well pick the first one that comes to mind because now it's now it's awkward. <laughs> oh, I will tell you. All right, I, I will tell you. Okay, the the first a, the first tape cassette tape I ever got was Bon Jovi's "Slippery When Wet." So you can oh, pull any song. I was in like I was like nine years old. Uh, yeah, you can pick any song off that album, and I can still probably pick up right where you left off. I can almost tell you the order that everything that every song came in. So yeah, that was good. We'll say "Wanted Dead or Alive." That was a really good oh, song. There you yeah. go. <laughs> yeah, that's a, nice. People know that. All right. Well, that's oh, nice. here, here, here's some trivia for you. Yeah. That um, Richie Sambora and John. Bon Jovi performed that song, just the two of them, on a stage at, I think, the MTV Video Music Awards or something a long time ago, obviously. And I was told, and someone will have to verify this, that that performance is what inspired the entire MTV Unplugged series. Oh. Really? Is that possible? That is possible. But I remember There's that a... series. In oh, the early they look. 90s. They both look like they're checking out your facts. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> we got to do it. There was a TV it. series from that song from that show. Well, well no. That, that, do, that language. Do you remember MTV Unplugged? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, totally. That the, the the genesis for that whole let's unplug was apparently that performance mm -hmm. at one of the award shows, the Grammys or American Music Awards mm -hmm. or whatever it was. Yeah. Yeah. I could be lying, but it's true as far as I know. Someone told me that and it's not a good, sounds, sounds legit. Yeah, I like the story. Exactly. Yeah. So for mine, I actually started a speech last week with dearly beloved, we are gathered here today uh, to wow. talk about this thing called life. Oh, man. <laughs> That's Beautiful. awesome. That's awesome. And you kind of are wearing purple today. So I know, nice. exactly. <laughs> right? Very thematic. <laughs> fits Love the it. theme. Fits the theme. All right. We have five minutes because we do have another interview. We do these back to back. Just FYI. We got batch it. it. We batch got it. Got it. Christy, we got to um, get the hell out of here. So we need to ask you two questions, takeaways. And I want to know a great sales tip. Give us, each one of you, give us just a, your best sales tip you could possibly give us. Mm. That's something you taught on your show, maybe anything like that. Um, before you make a pitch, before you try to give some sort of a value message, say it out loud and ask yourself, would I buy from me? Ooh. Good. Very one. good. Like and then nice. even take that even I'm sorry, Christy, but even take that's that right. a step further. Of course, you would buy for you because from you because that's the reason that you're selling the product that you're selling. But if you were in the prospects position, would you buy from you? That's how I want to qualify that. Excellent. I'm not going to qualify mine. So mine is <laughs> be consistent and persistent always. Hmm. That's poetic. I like that. Isn't it? Can yeah. you define Dearly beloved, we are gathered here today. Yes. What, <laughs> be consistent what is, and persistent. What does right. yeah. persistent look like? Yeah. What's, how do you go from being uh, persistent? We, where's the line between Versus that? annoying? Yeah. Ah, gotcha. Well, I didn't say that you go off half cocked, right? So, I mean, you have to, you have, to have some knowledge of your your client base and, and, and being consistent and persistent in life is important as well, right? Which means you're clear on who you are, you're clear on what you bring to the table. And if you are prospecting or if you are working with a client that you, you're, you're present, you're, you're constantly interacting. So that consistent, persistent presence 
is what's important. So it may not be persistent in sending them emails all the time, but being consistently and persistently present in every interaction is what's important. So you can take that in a hundred different directions, which is why I said I wasn't going to qualify it, but it is, um, you know, it is critical. And, And I had a sales manager once that told me this in regards to managing strategic accounts. And so creating that, that idea that you are ubiquitous, right? You're always there. It's because you have some way of, of providing your presence on a consistent and persistent basis. Well, and so. Janet, to, to answer your question, I actually wrote about that last fall. The difference between persistent and annoying is the value that you bring with each interaction. You can talk to me every day with something that I'm going to find valuable. That's the important person in the value equation is your prospect. But if you come to me every day with something that I find valuable, you're not annoying. If you call me once a month with something that doesn't interest me at all, I will block your phone number. Mm. Yeah. And so that's the kind of the difference. I mean, I get Seth Godin's blog in my inbox every day. It's never annoying. I don't always read it, but it's valuable often enough that I'm willing to keep it there. Got and it. there are people that I will hear from randomly that I'm like, oh, I didn't block you yet? Oh, okay. And <laughs> it, unsubscribe. Mm-hmm. So I, I think that's an important distinction that people miss. Yeah. So good. awesome. Oh, good. Good. Very All good. right. Well, let's finish up. Repeat your podcast and tell them where the best place to find each of you is. So it's the why and the buy, and you can find uh, you. Yeah. What's that? Trademarks. trademarks. Yes, it's trademarks it's as trademarks. the why and the buy. <laughs> uh, you can find the podcast episodes on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, wherever you get your uh, podcasts. Uh, it's the why and the buy dot com. And um, there's all, all the contact information is there as well. For me, you can reach me at uh, christywalters.com. That's C-H-R-I-S-T-I-E-W-A-L-T-E-R-S. And I can be found at jeffbajoric.com. Um, I've got an ebook that was just published recently. And uh, you can find that at rethinktheWayYouSell.com or you can find it through my website. Um, but Do you yeah, assume that, everyone is, knows how to spell Bajoric? Like it's just like Smith? Is that, don't they? I don't so J E F F E A J O R E K. So be like boy, A J O R E K. It's Jeffrey or it's Jeff with a J. So jeffbajoric.com. And I'm sure those are going to end up somewhere in the show notes or something, right? You got it. You can, and if you can't find me, if you can't find me, just Google uh, Jeff Bajoric and I show up everywhere. I'm on Twitter. I'm on LinkedIn. Reach out, connect with me. I I love the interactions. If you've got a question, I answer it. I'm not someone that says, well, it's going to cost you. I love talking about what I do. So um, I've gone to greater lengths than most would call sane (laughs) at no charge to help people out. So um, reach out. Let's talk. Awesome. And be sure to join our Facebook group at businessgrowthtime.xyz or just look it up on Facebook. And that's where you can find us. You can also find our past episodes at businessgrowthtime.com forward slash podcast. All right. Thanks, you guys. Thanks for joining us. It was fun. Excellent. We loved it. It's good to see you guys. Thank you. Enjoy.